So between the war in Ukraine and the waning demand on China, oil has been a volatile year, seen a volatile year. So that's what, what's in store for oil prices for next year. Canary CEO Dan Eberhardt joins me now. So what do you think? What, where are oil prices going in 2023? Uh, you know, I lo I'm looking for price, oil prices to go up. I think we're nearly a lock to hit hit $100 a barrel sometime next summer. Wow. And what what does that do? Well, yeah, what does that do then to the the price of gas? Uh, so that would push the price of gas up probably, you know, around, around a third, maybe a dollar, dollar, a dollar to a dollar forty around the country. What? What's going on is we've now got to refill. So we've taken 200 million barrels out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. We've got to refill that. China's demand is likely to shoot up about 2 million a day, 2 million barrels a day. And then when you layer on the fact that Russia's supply is probably going to drop about a million barrels a day next year because of the sanctions and their production auction cuts, you know, assuming OPEC doesn't get involved, which OPEC seems to want to support higher prices, I think this is a recipe for, for oil prices to go up and Q1 and Q2 of 2023. Yeah, and so the last of those uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve releases are, are sort of yeah. getting out of the market now. So naturally, uh, we might see the price of gas then inch back up, right, as, as supply, the artificial yeah. supply is coming off the market. Yeah, so U.S. consumers are going to be competing with the federal government. The federal government's plan is to buy 200 million barrels to replace what they what they let out this year. So I think that's going to put a floor under oil. And I really think, you know, the, the macro story of, you know, worrying about demand in the economy, I really think oil is going to decouple from that. And I think it's a supply problem and the growth in the Chinese economy not being shut down is going to more than make up for any kind of wobbles in the U.S. or the European economy. And this is just a, a recipe for a higher oil price in 2023. So when you talk about higher gas prices, then gas prices are what spiked mm -hmm. the inflation in the first place yeah. uh, back when President Joe Biden yeah. came into uh, office. Are you concerned then about the ripple effect to inflation? No, absolutely. I think it can make what the Fed is trying to do even harder. And I don't think the economy can take more, uh, you know, frankly, take more rises in interest rates. But look, the, the, the fact is, I think we're headed for a higher oil price in 2023. And that the Fed and interest rates are going to have to react to that, uh, as are consumers. So at what point do you think this administration gets any message to uh, encourage investment in fossil fuels here or change some of the regulations? Or do you think that that ship has sailed and, and that no matter what happens in the market, there's going to be no change from this administration? Well, Ed, I think if we're waiting for that, we may be waiting a very long time. And I think it may be more of a 2024 question. Um, but look, the, the administration keeps putting out policies that are are green friendly and against um, the fossil fuel industry, which, you know, if we can't if we can't invest in infrastructure and pipelines, if we can't frack on federal land, if they continue to ban the offshore lease sales, all of these are recipes that make that make energy harder to come by and dearer and make uh, middle class consumers that drive have to pay more. Look, the price of oil goes is effectively. 40% of the cost of your Uber, 40% of the cost of your plane ticket, 5% of the cost of what you buy on Amazon for in, in the transportation cost. Right. And it, it affects everybody. And I think the, the Biden administration keeps looking everywhere but there. And when they do talk about supply, they ask Saudi Arabia and Venezuela for more production, not North Dakota and Texas. Right. So. So it's a real head scratcher, but I, Dan, I wouldn't in, expect help oh, from them. Next I want to get this in. In the last 30 seconds that we have, I want to get this in. Um, yeah. The Keystone Pipeline, if you look at the timeline, would have been finished now or very shortly. Yeah. Um, what would have uh, that done? What would the situation well, look it, like? It would have lowered transportation costs, and it would have made our oil more. We could get more supply from Canada, and it would have brought prices down. Again, when the Biden administration makes uh, oil policy, they seem to put the consumer last um, and, and drive energy costs up for the average Americans, which I just don't understand, nor do I yeah. think it's good for the economy. Dan Eberhard, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here. This Thank debate you. will continue. Thanks, yeah. Dan.